Before we jump into today's show, the other day I put out a call saying, hey, my boss here at Chat Sports, James Yoder, hosts a Michigan football account. He was talking shit about the Buckeyes. So if you hate Michigan, hit that thumbs up icon. Well, now he's talking crap about the entire Browns report and Browns fans. So he thinks we cannot get to 500 likes on a video. Help me prove him wrong and help me show him don't mess with the dog pound. Hit that thumbs up icon to start the show. Today's Browns report is presented to you by Aura, an all-in-one digital safety company that is offering you a 14-day free trial, limited time only, just for the dog pound, when you go to Aura.com slash chat sports. Aura is helping you out online where you need protection the most, as we are online more than ever. I am proud to tell you more about them later on in the show. But we've got a busy show today. We have a lot of ground to cover. We're going to talk about the latest trade rumors, and then we're going to go and wrap up the show with some news nuggets that came out of the final press conference, uh, the, the pressers from minicamp and whatnot as that wrapped up. Plus, we have our stadium name challenge. It's coming to a close on today's show, so make sure you watch all the way through to get your votes in. But we're going back to a familiar favorite. It is our Bernie heads. We like to use these guys to have a bit of a scale of believability. Zero Bernie heads, fake news. It's not going to happen. Four Bernie heads believe one. So we work our way up all the way to, yeah, you can put it in stone. First story on the show. Are there new signs of Baker Mayfield potentially coming to Carolina? New hinting, some new rumors at it? I give it three Bernie heads. At this point, I would be more surprised than not if Baker is not playing for the Panthers in 2022. Now the question is, when would he get there? Right? I, I, that's where I've gotten to this in my point. Not if he's going to Carolina. I'm almost at four. I'm like 3.65 Bernie heads about him going to the Panthers. It's about when is it going to happen. So ESPN's David Newton, who covers the Panthers, tweeted this out yesterday, saying Panthers wide receiver Robbie Anderson said he was just trying to be a good teammate to his quarterback Sam Darnold when he tweeted a negative reaction to the team possibly signing Baker Mayfield. If you don't remember what uh, David is referring to here, it's actually on Instagram. It's all right, David. We, we, we won't make fun of the boomers. Uh, but he commented to this uh, post from a Panthers fan base, uh, fan page saying, Should the Panthers trade for Baker? And it's hard to read out, but at the bottom he's like, no, with a bunch of O's. And then he would double down on that. All right, Robbie Anderson does not want Baker Mayfield to come to Carolina. He replied to that saying, yeah, I don't. So it was very awkward for a little bit there because it was, ooh, how are you going to walk all of this back if Baker does end up going to Carolina? So now I'm wondering, is Robbie Anderson preparing for him to be his quarterback, right? Is he trying to put this little fire out because he caught wind of, hey, Baker's going to be your QB. You might want to go back and delete some old tweets kind of deal because it's not going to be pretty. Uh, so I, I think there's a very good chance that Baker will likely end up in Carolina. And now Robbie Anderson is trying to walk some of that back, right? Just kind of forget about that. Guys, we are closing in on 10,000 subscribers. Help me out. 9,218 subs. I want to get to 10K by training camp. So we have until July 27th to pick up 700 and change subs. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. That way you stay in the know and you get Browns coverage throughout the entire summer when other people, they're checking out. Next segment on the show. Are the Browns going to trade for Robbie Anderson? So now you go kind of 180, right? Before it was Robbie Anderson maybe hinting at a Baker trade happening by going, no, I wasn't bashing Baker. I was just defending Darnold. Well, probably not. But I give this just one Bernie head. So the reason why this story popped up is Josina Anderson, who I don't know what you want to label her as, an NFL insider, I guess. She always has just the weirdest tweets, and she's always just like, I knew about the story. I forgot. I didn't see they texted me that. So anyway, Josina, she suggested the Browns may be interested in trading for Robbie Anderson. Now, Anderson, if you don't remember, a couple days ago was hinting at possibly retiring. He was tweeting about that, saying, I might just kind of, you know, step away. And then he deleted those tweets and said, no, I was just kind of caught up in the moment. So here's the issue with trading for Robbie Anderson just kind of one-off. His contract is not very 
trade friendly for the Carolina Panthers. It's post June 1, which means contracts are a little different when you trade someone around here. But the reason why we talk about this is it's a pretty important issue, uh, impo a pretty important step if you want to make a trade for someone. We'll look at his contract details in just a moment. But first, I want to tell everyone about today's proud sponsor, Aura. Financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online device security, and family plans that protect up to five people. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, I'm never going to have my identity stolen. I'm never going to have my credit card hacked. Well, the hacksters, they're pretty dang good these days. And if, let's say, you share your Netflix password with someone, and that gets in a data breach, and that gets out... Boom, they've got your password, most likely for everything. So you invest in a lock on your front door. You should invest in Aura, who is offering you, by the way, a 14-day free trial just to dip your toe in, see if you like it, when you go to Aura.com slash chat sports. Going back to Robbie Anderson, if he is traded, the Panthers have a $9.7 million dead cap hit for this year, a $9.7 million dead cap hit for next year and a $1.2 million cap savings for this year. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense as to why they would trade away Robbie Anderson, who, since coming over from the Jets, you look at the stats from his first season, he was really good. He was a guy that, if you had him on your fantasy team, you appreciated him more than maybe other people in the league did. Now, last year, with Sam Darnold at the helm for most of the season, it wasn't pretty, right? Everything basically gets cut in half, and he didn't miss any games. Oh, I missed one game? No, I don't think he missed one game. He goes from over 1,000 yards to 500. Sure, he picked up some more touchdowns, but, yeah, played two full seasons there, 17 games. So I think Barry is pretty content on the current wide receiver room. I don't really see him going out to make a trade for a wide receiver after passing up on Jarvis and Will Fuller. Does he really want to give up draft capital to get Robbie Anderson? To me, that just doesn't really make sense. Plus... David Bell has been the most impressive player, I think we can say, through OTAs and minicamp, especially as a rookie, for how well he is playing. To me, that just does not signal that a trade is coming, that Andrew Barry goes, you know what, I thought this wide receiver room would step up a little more. Some of these young guys would take the next step. We're not seeing that. Maybe we should go get a player. I'm not really getting that vibe from the way the receivers are looking so far. Uh, now, well, we're looking at OTAs and minicamp. But I'll open it up to you. This is what Chat Sports is all about. Chatting. You know, two-way conversation. Should the Browns trade for a wide receiver? Y for yes or N for no? I don't see it happening. Is it fun? Yes. Trades are always fun. We're, we are Americans. We love trades. Who doesn't love trades? But I do not see it in the cards. I, I think I'm going to go with N for no. All right, third and final rumor on today's show, and it is a juicy one. Quarterback swap. Baker Mayfield for Sam Darnold. We started the show off by just sending Baker off to Carolina. What if it's a two-way plane ticket, and when he lands, he goes, all right, Darnold, here's your ticket back to Cleveland. Just one Bernie head for me. I don't see this being very likely. Uh, Mary Kay wrote about this the other day, and she's got some sources in Berea who say this is very unlikely to happen, so that's definitely pulling a lot of weight here. But the only reason maybe why this could happen is if you look at the contracts for both quarterbacks. They're pretty big, right? They're both uh, first-round picks back in 2018. Baker first overall, Darnold third overall. Both on their fifth-year options, both having the same amount of guaranteed money. It's a guaranteed contract. So the only way I could see this happening is if the Browns are so desperate to just get Baker out of the building, for whatever reason that may be, and the Panthers go, well, we don't want to have Baker's contract and Sam Darnold's contract on our books. Can you eat some of Baker's money and we'll send Darnold over to you? That way we don't have two big contracts on our books. That's really the only way I can try to mentally make sense of trading or swapping QBs here was both sides get a different, well, the Panthers get a starter and the Browns maybe go, well, if we know Watson is suspended for X amount of games, maybe we should bring Darnold in because we might, we'd like to have a better competition with Jacoby Brissett. We've showed this graphic before, but I think it's a good reminder. There's no competition here as to who a better quarterback is. So if there are any Panthers fans out there watching right now, 
Do not sell yourself on Sam Darnold being better than Baker Mayfield. He's just not. In any every way possible, he is not a better quarterback than Baker so far. So, Carolina, take Baker Mayfield to buy yourself some time. I understand from a fan base perspective, Panthers fans don't want Baker because they're going to win eight games, they're not going to get a good draft pick, and they won't be able to get Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. But again, Panthers fans don't make the decisions, right? The Carolina front office does. And what do they care if they suck this year, get the first overall pick, they're going to get fired, and it's going to be the next GM who inherits C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young. So they're not thinking about that. They're not thinking of, oh, we should tank so that the next head coach and next GM could have a better quarterback to work with. Take Baker, buy yourself some time, don't get fired this year, and then try to either, A, see if Baker is a long-term QB for you. If not, reset after that year, and maybe Matt Corral, after sitting for a year, can take over. I also wonder, could it be Darnold versus Brissett? That's the second half of this conversation, right? We addressed Carolina getting Baker. Would the Browns be interested in having Sam Darnold to maybe bring in some competition if they know that they won't have Deshaun Watson for a certain amount of games? So I compared their stats over the last 17 starts. For Darnold, that creeps back into his time in New York. And for Jacoby Brissett, that goes back to his time in Indy. But over their last 17 starts... They're both not very pretty, right? I think we can say that is like the first thing that pops out to you. For Sam Darnold, 15 touchdowns to 18 interceptions, that is not good. That is not good football. And sure, he maybe has thrown for six more yards than Brissett, but um, yeah, no fancy sauce. I don't like fancy sauce, you know? Jacoby Brissett at least got a better touchdown to interception ratio protecting the football. It's, it's not, it, it's an eyesore. So if you had to pick a quarterback, who is the better QB? Is it Sam Darnold or is it Jacoby Brissett? Let me know which QB you think is the better overall quarterback. I hope if a suspension happens, it is for less than 10 games. Because 10 games with Darnold may not be pretty. And I'm not saying 10 games with Jacoby Brissett would be bad, but I'm just in the camp of trying to be a little more realistic on who Jacoby Brissett is at a quarterback, which is maybe a 500 quarterback. I understand this Browns roster is awesome. And if you plug him in after seeing what Baker did last year, you would think you can just connect the dots, right? It's like a, a kid's menu at a pancake place where you just, you know, connect the dots with your little crayons. But I don't think it's that simple where you can go, well, the Browns last year were 8-9 and nine with bad Baker. You take healthy Brissett, put it in this Browns roster, it should equal 9-8, and 10-7. and seven. It's a new team. It's a new year. I just don't believe it works that way. All right. We're moving on to some news here as minicamp wrapped up, and there is a picture of Denzel Ward getting checked out by the trainers. Now, unfortunately, he did exit the final Browns minicamp sesh, took his shoe off, which looked at the trainers, ultimately went back inside the locker room. Stefanski, afterwards talking to the media, did not offer an update on Denzel Ward. I don't have much more information beyond that, but I am just hoping that Denzel Ward is okay because... I don't even want to finish the sentence of if he's not. So we're just putting good vibes out there. Hopefully Ward is okay, and this is just a tiny little blimp, maybe a stub toe. We've got some other injury updates, though, as minicamp wrapped up. Uh, Nate Ulrich tweeting out cornerback Greedy Williams and wide receiver Jakeem Grant. Uh, on the field but not practicing today with the Browns. Grant has been idle since last week and Williams earlier this week. Coaches are always pretty vague in June about what injuries are, mostly because it probably really aren't injuries. They just don't want to push it. It's June, so I wouldn't be too concerned about this. Another interesting story that came out of the Browns' final minicamp sesh where the players got to speak to the media was Jadeveon Clowney in front of the mic saying, Jadeveon Clowney said this is, the full, uh, this is the first time that the offense has played a role in his free agency. Said he was going to follow Deshaun Watson wherever he was going to go. He also added, Bake's my guy. I like Bake great person so pretty interesting stuff right there that Clowney we were all wondering what was taking so long we weren't really waiting on Clowney for a good t portion of time we were waiting on uh to see where Deshaun Watson could end up now afterwards then maybe Clowney took his time because there was like a month period of 
Watson was in Cleveland, and okay, Marshall, my producer, in my ears, like two months, dude. Yeah, I'm just trying to defend Clowney here a little bit, but uh, pretty interesting stuff right there, if you ask me. All right, final segment of the show. It's our stadium name challenge. If you guys have been following along lately, you know we've been doing a bracket to uh, give the Brown Stadium a new name. Is it maybe? Uh, Dunzos for First Energy. At least a city, Cleveland City Council member would like to see that. So vote on your favorite stadium name. Doghouse, type 1. Dog Pound, type 2. Jim Brown Stadium, type 3. Or Lakefront Stadium, type 4. We will announce the winner in a future Browns report next week, so stay tuned for that.